What's up, guys? So we are here today at the sixth annual Miami Concourse, surrounded by probably 150 to 200 million dollars in post-war supercars, vintage cars, hypercars. We have an assortment of everything. We have some really, really special pieces here today. One of my personal favorites is the one of one Gallardo Concept S. What's so special about the Miami Concourse is we are surrounded by so much art, fashion, and beauty. It is the ultimate destination and the perfect location for all of these blue chip cars. A huge thank you to Aston Martin and a huge thank you to all the sponsors. I would say the only thing, we just need to make sure the security posts these guys up. What are we loading uh, these in tomorrow? Tomorrow, 5 a.m. Okay. Concours. I'm Sergio Pena, a performance driver for Aston Martin, and we are here showcasing our amazing DBX 707 as well as the F1 edition Aston Martin Vantage. Can't thank John Tamarian and his crew at Curated Enough for what they've done here. The energy, the car selection, the entire event. Oh, we're huge supporters of this event, and this year I think the bar's been raised. Welcome to the 2023 Miami Design District Concourse. We have car communities from across the country that have joined us today and some of the most beautiful cars from all over the world. I want to thank Craig Robbins, the Miami Design District for hosting this event and a fantastic partner, Curated Prestige. I am so psyched to be back here for Concourse. It's our most magical day of the year. You walk around and you just feel like you're on a red carpet. And in fact, you are. Hi, I'm Mark Moskowitz and I am the Chief Judge at the Miami Concourse. I obviously am here at the behest of John Tamarian, the head of Curated and the man who's organized this great event for many years. I do not go to many concours where the red carpet is laid out and people are having the kind of time that they seem to have here. I've never seen a row of, a, I think, a dozen Paganis. Can you find that anywhere else in the world? We're judging here mostly pre-millennial cars. Some of these cars are brand new. There's really no reason to put it through this kind of scrutineering. It stands on its own, and those cars will be looked at separately by a separate team. One of the ways that we do this concours is, yes, you have to have a great car, but also, 
we try not to be repetitious. We don't try not to have the same car judged over and over and over again. Thus, you see a great variety. This is the famed 12-cylinder Ferrari California Spider, a rare car, an incredibly valuable car. We're talking about a car that goes well into the eight figures, but they are magnificent cars to own. This is a Ferrari, but it's actually, there's not a Ferrari label on it. It's named Dino for Ferrari's son who died in mid 50s of Duchesne muscular dystrophy. But the cars are just beautifully styled, real collector's piece. We'll move on here. One of these cars is in the judging and one of these cars is not, because as I said, we try not to give too many of the, of the same type of cars, but this is called a Ferrari Daytona. And it is, again, a collector's piece, as many of these cars are. This is a lightweight Porsche. There were only 200 of these made. Some call this the holy grail of pre-war Porsches, other than, of course, those cars that were actually raced by the greats. Lamborghini, like many other, other great designs, came off of what Ferrari started. Ferrari basically was a training ground for many of the great designers and many of the great manufacturers that came out of Italy. And early on, they had a couple of cars, but they really hit it out of the park with this Lamborghini Miura, considered perhaps one of the most beautiful cars in the world. This car is in all black, and what's one of the very special things is it's a Countach, dramatic, dramatic design, but it is the 25th anniversary Countach, and it was owned by singer Rod Stewart. Providence in some ways does make a difference because people who could afford great cars often had them designed to their own specifications, and the factories would take special care to make their cars just a little bit more special. I am standing here with Pablo Campanc, and we are looking at the cars from the touring class, and what comprises this class are the great rally cars and the great DTM, basically yeah, yeah. motor racing. It started in Germany and of course spread all over Europe and a little bit farther. These are the super sedans. And right here, what do we have? We have an Alfa. So as I tell you, you know, as I, you tell before, Mark, it's an Alfa Romeo class one DTM. Sorry, my German is not that good like yours. <laughs> but yes, for me, this is the best car ever made, not just because of the car and the mechanic itself, also the history. 93, they won the championship, you know, most all Germans racing the German DTM, so it was great for the, for the series and also great for Alfa Romeo and the Italian. So a gr great car, a great history, and I love it. Class A, World Early Car from uh, Carlos Sainz, this is uh, the 99, 98, sorry, so what I can tell you, this car is, uh, again, hardcore, uh, doesn't have any uh, uh, power, uh, paddle shift, as you know, all, all style, but still uh, a lot of fun to drive, and who doesn't remember Carlos uh, losing the champion in 93, uh, crushing, you know, the helmet on the rear windshield, so a lot of history, and yeah, uh, you know, the last of the breath of the Group A. come out of our class that we judge this morning. Of course, you are the 2023 Miami Concord Best of Show winner. If you haven't been to the Miami Concourse yet, you have to put it on your calendar. We have huge surprises coming for the future. This event is only growing more and more and more. And most importantly, because of passionate enthusiast collectors like yourself. We will see you next year for the seventh annual Miami Concourse.